Today, I'm going to tell you the top seven most dangerous animals in the state of Tennessee, and we're going to get started. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to All Things Knoxville. My name is Ben Barreto, a real estate agent here in Knoxville, Tennessee. On this channel, we talk about all things Knoxville, and I post videos every single week. So I hope you stick around, I hope you subscribe, and, and uh, come back for more. And listen, I am a real estate agent before I'm a YouTuber, so if you are considering buying or selling a home, investing in real estate, please give me a call. My contact information is right here. It's also in the description. Don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to give you a hand. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the top seven most dangerous animals in Tennessee, and you may be surprised at some of the animals on this list. But to get started, we're going to jump right in and we're going to discuss spiders. And the first one are black widows. Black widows are small black spiders, about one and a half inches in length. They have a red hourglass shape on their bellies and on their back. You'll usually find them in dark places. Uh, they're usually not out in the open. And anyone that's watched a horror film or, you know, have a fear of spiders, you've seen a black widow before. Now, you may not know this, but black widow bites aren't actually likely to kill you, but they will make you feel horrible. And if you have poor health, some of these conditions that the bites cause or the poison causes could lead to death. Some of the symptoms include muscle and back pain like cramps, fever, nausea, shaking, and the worst one is breathing problems, which is why I just say, you know, if you got bad health, then it could possibly lead to death. Because if you're already having trouble breathing, and then you have something that adds to that, you know, it could it could add up to, you know, a, a bad ending, I guess, is the only way I could think of put that politely. Second on the list are brown recluses. Again, this is a spider. It's usually a caramel or a dark brown. Now, br black brown recluses are smaller than black widows and they usually have like a violin shaped on their the head not the big bulb on the bottom but but around the the back of the head but obviously you don't want to get that close another way to tell what a, a brown recluse from a regular spider is most spiders have eight eyes so you got to stare to the stare to the spider in the eye and you're looking for six eyes on a brown recluse usually in pairs so sometimes it's hard to tell if it's one eye or two eyes Obviously, you don't want to get that close either, so if you see brown spiders, just stay away. Again, they're smaller than black widows, and they're usually about a centimeter long. So if you see big brown spiders in Tennessee, which you will see a lot, they're not poisonous. Now, even though they're smaller than black widows, a lot of times a brown recluse bite can be nastier. The symptoms of a brown recluse bite include chills, nausea, skin lesions, and this is the worst part, I was going to share photos of this, but I didn't want to be the cause of you losing your lunch. So if you're interested, Google brown recluse bites and you'll see what I'm talking about. These skin lesions can lead to severe cases of muscle uh, decay in the area around the bite. Check it out if you're brave. And maybe wait 30 minutes if you just ate. Okay, so that's enough of spiders. You only got two spiders to worry about in the state of Tennessee that are really dangerous. Now we're going to move on to furry animals. And third on the list is black bears. I'm sure many of you were expecting that to be on the list. Some of you may be surprised it's on the list because a lot of people are dumb and they think black bears aren't dangerous, but they're still bears and they still eat, they're still carnivores and hunters and they can still easily kill you. Now, black bears are the only species of bears in the state of Tennessee, usually can be found in the Smoky Mountains. People see them all the time. And as I was saying, there are dumb people that try to get really close and take pictures of these bears. Bad idea. Black bears and humans have had a lot, and especially in the Smokies, have had a lot of interaction. Um, and black bears have connected humans with food, especially with campers leaving food out uh, and things like that. It's an easy lunch for a black bear. So they're not always afraid of you. You should still be afraid of them. Now, obviously, black bears are not as large as brown bears. They're smaller and they're black, but they're still very dangerous and they still outweigh humans by several hundred pounds. If you ever run into a black bear in the Smoky Mountains or while you're out hiking in East Tennessee, here's some quick tips on what to do. First off, don't run. If you run, the bear's likely going to catch you because they can run a lot faster than we can. The next thing you want to do is make yourself real big. So you want to put your hands up and wave them around. And then you want to start making a lot of noise like, go away bear, go away, go away. And then usually the bear will probably lose interest, kind of be a little caught off guard and they'll, they'll leave you alone. 
Now, if you see a black bear starting to huff and blowing out their nose and pawing the ground, you're probably in trouble. At that point, do not, no matter what anyone says, do not play dead because you're likely going to end up dead. Okay? Don't do that. What you want to do is just fight for your life and hope that the bear doesn't want to put that much energy in to get in their lunch and they leave you alone. All right, fourth on the list is wild elk. Wild elk used to be a natural habitant of East Tennessee, but for a while their population dwindled to almost being non-existent. But there has been a reintroduction program of wild elk in the Smokies, and so we see them a lot now. Wild elk uh, are a lot, they look, they're a lot like deer in sometimes in how they look, but they're much bigger, and their antlers can usually grow to up to four feet long. Um, it, and again, they're much bigger, weighing up to almost 700 pounds. Now, the, the thing about wild elk is they don't have natural predators in East Tennessee, so they're, they're not really afraid of anyone other than humans because they can get hunted by them, they don't know who we are, but if they're cornered, if they feel threatened and that they can't escape, they will attack. And again, remember those four foot long antlers, those things will mess you up. Additionally, wild elk can run up to 40 miles an hour and they can jump as high as eight feet. So, just because you're behind a fence doesn't mean you're safe. Just because you climb up a tree doesn't mean you're safe. So if you see wild elk, hopefully there's some distance, you take your picture, don't try to get close, don't try to feed it, don't try to take a selfie with the wild elk or the bear or anything else on this list. Okay, your Instagram likes are not that important. All right, so when you see a wild elk, admire it and move on. Fifth on the list is wild boar. Now, wild boar are actually not natural to the United States. They were introduced to the United States in the 20th century and since then have grown into a pretty large, sometimes overpopulated. Wild boar are regularly hunted in East Tennessee or in Tennessee in general as a way to help uh, control the population. You'll recognize a wild boar because they're usually going to be brown, caramel, or black uh, hair, bristled hair. They're, they, they're covered in hair, not like regular pigs that maybe have a little bit of hair. And they have upper and lower tusks that they use to bite, to, to uh, gouge, and fight fight you when they're cornered or, or when they feel threatened or they feel like their babies are threatened. They can weigh up to 200 pounds and another main difference of a wild boar and a pig is wild boars have really long snouts that are almost uh, smaller on the end. They get smaller towards the end whereas pigs a lot of times have just round flat snouts. Now again, wild boar can be very, very aggressive especially when there's babies around and wild boar do live in packs. So if you see one, there's more than likely more in the area. So stay away. Don't try to confront them. They can also run extremely fast. Now, luckily, wild boar are nocturnal. So as long as you're not out hiking uh, at dusk, and real late at night at dusk or before dawn, you're probably safe. But still, it doesn't mean you won't run into them. So just be aware of your surroundings when you're out in the Smokies hiking the Appalachian Trail or something like that. All right, now we get to my favorite part of the list, and we're gonna talk about snakes, okay? Six on the list are copperhead snakes. Now, copperhead uh, it refers to a lot of things in East Tennessee, Copperhead Road, but uh, copperhead snakes are everywhere, uh, especially where there's a lot of water and uh, woodland areas. You can recognize copperheads by their distinctive copper color head and their light brown body with dark bands that wrap around it. And they usually grow anywhere from two to three feet long. Again, you can find them in forested and woodland areas, usually near water. And they, they're never usually out in the open, especially in the summer. They like to be in cool, shaded areas. So you want to be pay attention to rocks, holes in trees, things like that. But in the warmer spring, and especially in the uh, fall months before hibernation, they are out in the open. Uh, they're out tanning or, or you know sunbathing, whatever you call it. They're they're out there controlling their body temperature. So when you're hiking, you want to be vigilant about where you put your feet, especially if you're hiking in high brush and you can't really see the trail. Make a lot of noise. What I, I see a lot of people do is with a walking stick and just when you're walking, just kind of give the ground a nice strong pat and hit it and and create a vibration so that snake knows you're coming. And usually they will either crawl deeper into their hole or they'll run off to find a hole to hide in. Now, like, these snakes are extremely aggressive, 
And if they can reach you, they will bite you. So again, they can grow up to three feet long, so you want to stay outside of that range. Now, copperhead bites are not likely to kill you. However, they are going to make you very sick and uncomfortable. So some of the, the signs or some of the side effects of a copperhead bite are as follows. Nausea, breathing restrictions, fever and sweating, a blurred vision, sometimes actual hallucinations. And again, their bite will rarely kill you, but again, if you have already if you're already in poor health, you have health complications, the the side effects of the bite in combination with your poor health can kill you. So stay away from copperheads. And I bet you can guess what seven on the list is, but here we are. Seven on the list is rattlesnakes. Timber rattlesnakes like similar habitats to copperheads. So remember, woodland, uh, forested areas. Unlike copperheads, they get much bigger, as much as six feet long. They're usually brown or yellow with, with contrasting dark diamond bands that go around the body with a, bear, with a dark tail at the end, which is what they rattle when they see you and they feel threatened. Now, I left this out with copperheads, but both copperheads and timber rattlesnakes are nocturnal. They also both like shaded areas, especially in the summer, but similar to the copperhead in the cooler months of the year, you can find uh, the timber rattlesnake out in the open, controlling that body temperature, trying to get direct sunlight. Now, timber rattlesnakes again, though bigger, are not likely to kill you unless you have health complications. So just keep that in mind. But the side effects of a timber rattlesnake bite are numbness in the body part that was bitten, feeling dizzy and weak, usually followed by a fever, a disturbed vision, sometimes hallucinations from the poison and from the fever, and again, worst of all, respiratory problems. Now, the timber rattlesnake is seven, and it is considered the most dangerous animal in Tennessee, and we have more incidents of timber rattlesnake bites than any of the other animals on this list. Now, now just a, a couple other things uh, to deal with some, some other animals that have been reintroduced to the area and the populations are growing, and that is the mountain lion. Mountain lions were hunted and their population dwindled, especially due to the feline fever. A lot of them died off. But there have been growing sightings of mountain lions, especially in the Smoky Mountain areas. So maybe their population is having to come back, so just be aware of that. Now some rumors that I want to quash real quick is no, there are not any wolves in Tennessee. There are no wolves in the Smoky Mountains. We do have coyote, so a lot of times there may be confusion when people see a coyote and they think it's a wolf, but there are no wolves in Tennessee. And I heard this somewhere, but someone was asking about panthers in the Smoky Mountains, and there are not panthers in the Smoky Mountains. The only panthers in the United States can be found in the deep south of Florida in the swamps. And But even then, uh, you're not going to find many of them. I, honestly, I don't even think that's true anymore. But if it is true, that's where you're going to find them. But there are no uh, panthers in Smoky Mountains, uh, and there are no wolves. If you're thinking of selling a home then you got to know that there are costs involved. Preparation costs and actual costs to selling the home and the selling process. If you are considering selling your home and you're curious about what those costs are, then what you should do is go down in my description and follow the link and download my guide, The Real Cost of Selling Your Home. It's a PDF and uh, I, it, I cover everything in that guide to let you know what kind of costs you can expect up front and in the end when you prepare, sell, and close on your home so you can go on and do whatever it is that you want to do that's driving you to sell your home. Well, that's so much for today's video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. As always, it was a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next week, bye-bye.